time now for some science news. Joining us is Carrie Grenz. She is an associate editor with The Scientist. And in that role, she reads through dozens of new research studies every week and picks out a few for us that caught her attention. This week, earthquakes, dolphins, and flying snakes. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Mike. Let's start with the earthquakes. What are researchers learning about rumblings in the New Madrid seismic zone? This is in an area of the Midwest where Missouri, Illinois, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Arkansas all come together, kind of along the Mississippi River. And the largest earthquakes in recent history in the continental U.S. happened in this area about 200 years ago. And seismologists have thought that since that time, we've just been feeling these aftershocks for decades and decades. But a new study now kind of changes that thinking. And it proposes that these little rumblings are actually building seismic activity, increased stress, not aftershocks, which means that the Midwest might be in for a shakeup. Oh, so <laughs> any any way we can predict when and how badly? Oh my gosh, that is the multi-billion dollar question there. You know, one News report did say that some analysis from the U.S. Geological Survey predicted that having an earthquake of similar size to those from the early 1800s within the next 50 years is about 7 to 10 percent. And the chance of having one of a magnitude 6 or larger, magnitude 6 would be smaller than those in the next 50 years is about 25 to 40 percent. So it's possible that there could be a big one. So that's worrisome on on many levels. Well, sure, because, I mean, you do have cities like Memphis and St. Louis that are not terribly far away from this area. Any chance they could be wrong? Of course, of course. I mean, there, you know, seismologists are not very good at predicting when and where earthquakes will happen. All right. So let's hope for the best there and let's move on to dolphins. There's a new dolphin. Right. So a new river dolphin, which is extremely special. There's only a handful of species of dolphins that live in rivers. Most are in open oceans. And for almost 100 years, it was thought that in South America, there were just two species living in freshwater river basins. But a new DNA analysis of dolphins in Brazil shows that there's, in fact, a third species living in a river. And, you know, people had known that these dolphins were in this river, but they just hadn't considered that this was a different species. What does this dolphin look like? Well, they're cute, I think, but this dolphin has a very long snout. And one of the unique features of it is that it has a different number of teeth than the other river dolphins. So this dolphin was there all along, but nobody knew that it was different? Right. You know, they had just sampled these individuals recently and found that, in fact, they have some genetic diversity and also some differences in their bodies. Finally, Carrie, your last pick for this week is about flying snakes, which scientists have learned about how they fly. But I have to admit, I didn't even know there were flying snakes. Yeah, it's a <laughs> it can be kind of a creepy thought, but um, they don't fly like birds, but they can project themselves, you know, 30 meters. This is about 100 feet, really far. And they kind of squirm through the air in an S-shaped pattern. And the researchers say it kind of looks like they're flying. They can leap from a tree really far. And, you know, as a circular shape animal, you don't imagine that they're very aerodynamic, that they can get very much lift when they're flying off of a tree. But in fact, what the animals do is they will flex their ribs and kind of flatten out their body so they're more like a semicircular arched shape. They'll get more flat. And so the researchers, this was kind of neat, they used a 3D printer to print out a model of a snake in this flattened configuration, and they put it in a tank of water to simulate how a snake would fly. And they found that if you tilt the snake at the right angle, you can actually get quite a bit of lift. But this 3D printer model gave the scientists an idea of of how they do it. Of the aerodynamics of it, yes. But the researchers also said that it didn't completely account for everything that the animals can accomplish, which is really neat to think about, that these animals still can get further loft and distance than what they could model using this 3D printed snake. Kerry Grenz, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, well, thanks for having me. Kerry Grenz is an associate editor with The Scientist and a regular contributor to The Pulse.